The largest baseball tournament in the world, Midwest Sports Productions Hawaiian Hip Fest, brought 654 teams to Kansas City to compete this past weekend. Welcome to USSA Midwest Network News. I'm Michelle Roberts. And I'm Chucky Kemp. The weekend was also full of fast pitch competition at the Charlie Brown Special and Wildcat Classic. We have action and reaction from those. Plus, later on the show, we'll feature Sports Junkie in our Academy Spotlight. But first, let's take a look at the fun off the diamond on Saturday at the Hawaiian Hit Fest. It's really cool, and this is a different tournament than any other tournament we go to, so we always enjoy coming to the Hit Fest. It's safe to say that the largest tournament in the country is pretty unique. This year, 654 teams attended the Hawaiian Hit Fest, but it's not just about what's happening on the field that makes it so special. It's a fun tournament for them to kind of get out here. You know, the moms get involved. They've been working on it all week, so... You know, the players appreciate it, and it makes a fun atmosphere for everybody, so it's a good time. Midwest Sports Productions offered prizes for social media contests and the best decorations that help get the entire team involved and make many dugouts look like a Hawaiian getaway. So much fun for the kids, for the um, for the players, for the moms. The coaches get a little break because we do all the work. We like helping out and like helping with the younger kids, and then we just like to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. It's fun to decorate. What do you think of it? Um, Oh, uh, what's it called? Um, Hawaiian Hip Festy. <laughs> well, a lot of Pretty surfboards. Nice. Yeah. Um, nice. <laughs> Along with decorations, some teams even had special jerseys made for the weekend, including the Sliders, who have made it an annual event. They like it. You know, it kind of mixes things up. Uh, last year they had a good time with it. Um, it's something we look forward to every year. It's a good tournament. It makes a lot of fun. Well, I love these. Yeah, these are cool. With another year of the Hit Fest in the books, you can be sure that many teams are already thinking about next season. We get together as a team to do the decorations, and then there are so many teams. This is probably the biggest tournament we go to all year. They really do have a lot of fun with it, and you know, it's it's motivating to get out here and see all these teams. A lot of these teams we'll, we'll see later in the year at the state tournament too, so it's a good test for us, and it's a lot of fun. We'll start off at Platte Ridge with one of our two 12A championship games. This one between Red Storm and the Hawks. They get up top of the first inning. Plenty of runs coming across in the early frame. First for the Hawks, runner on third. Wild pitch gets the backstop, and the runner slides in safely to give them a 1-0 lead. Later in the inning, 2-0 now, and a third coming across. This time a base hit up the middle. So they've given themselves a nice early lead. And the way the bottom of the first started, it looked like they'd carry that lead onto the second. Here's the first out. It comes on a diving catch from the left fielder. He just barely gets there before it lands in the grass. And then next, a good stab here at first base. So they get 1-2 right out of the gates, but they forgot the last part of that, which is 3. Red Storm would go on to score 5 runs in the bottom half to take a 5-3 lead going to the second, where their pitcher held it with a couple of strikeouts. And in the end, it's Red Storm winning the title 16-8 over the Hawks. The other 12A championship just next door, it's the Jaguars and Rampage squaring off. 8-0 Jags in the third and a lot of this. Strikeout looking for out number three in the third. But the Jags bats went quiet late in the game too. They're trying to add to their eight run lead with two runners in scoring position. Good pitch, gets another batter looking. Problem for the Rampage was on the offensive side though. With one single sprinkled in the mix here in the last inning, this is what happened. First out, backwards K. Second out, another one just browsing. Third and final out that clinches the championship. A swinging strike. What a performance from the Jaguars and their pitching. They win it 8-0 over Rampage. One of the early bracket games in 13 AA between the Junction City Brigade and the Monarchs. Very one-sided game, but some good action early on. Runner on first for the Monarchs. No outs. Grounder up the middle. Look at the shortstop. Cuts it off, and that's a 6-3 double play after he stepped on the bag. They couldn't keep the Monarchs down for long. Second inning, runner on third. Base ripped through the left side. That scores one, and that's just the beginning. Same inning, couple more on the bases. Chopper toward the hole. This is going to be a long throw, and the throw is low. Two runs come across the score, and it is three zips. Still later in the frame, this one is the big swing, as it is skied over the center fielder's head, and they just keep coming. It's 9-0. By the end of that inning, they would end the game with an 11-2 spread. Monarchs go on to lose their next game by one run to the Lawrence Cubs, and the Cubs would lose the championship game 9-7 to ABA Emory. In 13 AA, the strike zone slammers taking on the Gardner Bruins. The Bruins in control right from the beginning. Pick it up in the third inning, already 3-0. More on the way. Runners on. Base hit through the left side. Look at that thing roll. That rolls for a while. 
One run comes across the score, and that's a double for nothing. Same inning this time, switching it up, going to the opposite field. That ball sneaks through, and another run scores. It's six nothing at this point, and they took care of business on the mound and in the field as well. Strike zone slammers trying to get something going. Runner on first, one out. Line drive just picked up before it hits the dirt. That's a double play, and they get a few more runs across as well. The Gardner Bruins win eight to nothing over the strike zone slammers. It's time to take a quick break, but keep it locked here for Fast Pitch Finals and the Game of the Week up next. All Sports Media is a brand new company focused on everything sports. This year we'll be working to cover UAAA events throughout the Midwest. All Sports Media will provide coverage of events, educational podcasts, news, and more. For more information and available sponsorship opportunities, contact Justin Stein at the email on your screen. All Sports Media. We're all sports me. In the fifth inning of the 12B final, Missouri Thunder drops it into center and gets one on, hoping for the comeback as Firestorm leads two to nothing. But the pitcher takes control here, getting the K and holding on to the lead. Firestorm wins their first U-Triple-S-A tournament of the season. In the 12A championship, Casey Threat's ace throws one past Team Iowa Force. Casey Threat gets their third shutout of the tournament and after finishing second in two prior MSP tournaments this year, they don't let this one slip away. Yeah, like really good defense. Well, we had a lot of teamwork, and it took us a lot uh, to get here and through this weekend. But um, I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad we stayed through. In the high school B division, the Smackers earned Charlie Brown special plaques after a three to nothing victory over Lightning. And here's Grace Viage for more. I think a lot of our success came from our upbeat attitudes and the want that we showed. We definitely had to dig a little deeper because we um, were behind in a couple games and usually we end up falling, And but this weekend we ended up coming out on top and that was just a really nice change and it was definitely a great weekend of softball. Down in the 10C final, Platt City Thunder facing the Lunachicks. 5-0 Thunder and last chance at bat for the Luna Chicks who take advantage. Knocking one up the third baseline which gets stuck in the fence and is rolled a ground roll double. Next batter grounds it back to the pitcher and a high throw makes time for the runner to score. Luna Chicks get one more run that inning but Plaid City Thunder close the game out 5-2. The champs say this is a pivotal win for them. Yeah, we just did good hitting and fielding. This is our first time we're in first place and all other tournaments we got second this season. In the 10 open lower flight bracket, DC Dynamite won their quarterfinal game 7-6 in dramatic fashion. Then in the championship, they defeated Cool Cats 8-0 to, to be named Charlie Brown Champs! Woo! And it was 6-1, to one, I think. And then we and then we won 7-6 to uh, six in the last Inning. Our Game of the Week segment makes a return this week and does so with a bang. The Hawaiian Hit Fest is big and with an exciting week in a baseball comes some big moments. And that's where our Game of the Week takes us. It's the Midwest Sticks taking on the Andover Shocks in the 12 AAA Championship game. How about some defense? Sticks up 1-0, runners on for the Shocks, two outs. Well plays ball in right field, sets up a bang bang play at the plate. Great throw, tag gets him. That keeps the sticks out in front. Wow. Now let's skip to the fun part. Sticks up 2-0 in the final frame. Top half of the six. Runner on second for the shocks. Ripped through the left side. Runner has to hold at third, but the batter sneaks into second base. So there's the tying run. One comes across right here to cut the lead in half. They would get one more on a hit batter to tie it, and another in the same inning to take the lead. Would we need extras? Well, let's find out. Tying run on third, fly ball or base hit will do it. How about a sacrifice fly? The sticks are right back in it and they weren't interested in staying late. How about a walk off in a big way? Just a rip to center. Clears the outfielders and that'll do it. The Midwest sticks walk it off and beat the Andover shots four to three. Oh, it says a lot. You know, uh, they uh, definitely made it interesting. Uh, you know, Zay, he pitched a heck of a game for us uh, pretty much through five. And then, you know, got some adversity up there, had some base runners. Uh, they took the lead. And I think it says a lot for our boys that uh, they really came back and showed that they had the heart to win. Okay, because we're all on the right page. And if I work hard for them, they work hard for me. Well, 
so, so we're all thinking, don't give up, don't give up, so we didn't give up. Yes, oh, 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 oh we got down on ourselves a little, but it, it didn't mean anything to us. That's what I've been telling my boys here for the last uh, uh, few weeks, that this is the biggest tournament of the year, and this is what we gear up for, this is what we practice hard for, this is what they have been training to do, and it feels really good to see the gratification for them, you know, how well they played this weekend. That's all for the Game of the Week. When we return, Sports Junkie is featured on this week's Academy Spotlight. Stay with us. With more than 20 years of experience putting on high-level events, there's no better choice for your team than KC Sports Tournaments. Get the best experience and exposure this summer by choosing U-Triple-S-A and playing KC Sports Tournaments all season long. Don't miss out on a chance to compete against the best while getting an outstanding tournament experience. We've got events happening right now and all summer long, including our Memorial Day Dual Super NIT, which will once again be broadcast live on MLB.com. At KC Sports, we pride ourselves on making your tournament experience something you'll never forget. Visit KCSports.org for more information. Welcome back to the Academy Spotlight. I'm joined by Alan Wilds. He's one of the co-owners of Sports Junkie Academy. Alan, can you tell me how your academy got started? Sure. Uh, we've basically been in business about a year now. Um, and the idea really came from all of our kids kind of played club sports together growing up. And, uh, you know, we practiced in some, let's just say, less than adequate facilities over the years. So about 15 months ago, maybe a little longer, we started putting our heads together and uh, just seeing what we could come up with. And we had a pretty good idea of how we didn't want to do it. And that kind of helped us get the ball rolling to uh, create Sports Champion Academy. Facility-wise, what does it provide for athletes out there? Well, I think what makes our facility unique is the space is configurable based on what the coach or the instructor wants to do. So, you know, in other words, we don't have just static tunnels in a fielding area. You can create one big fielding area. You can create tunnels in a partial fielding area. Uh, it's kind of wide open. Is your facility just one for fast pitch and baseball, or is there other sports that would benefit from this? We have other sports in there, too. Um, we're, obviously, we're primarily set up for baseball and softball, but uh, we've had speed and agility classes in there. Um, we've had a football coach in there giving lessons over the winter. Uh, we've had a, a soccer coach, I believe, in and out of there, and we're trying to, we're trying to grow that side of it, too, and kind of help people understand it's, it's for more than just baseball and softball. I noticed a unique thing about your academy is a lot of your clubs are not named the same as Sports Junkie. Um, how has your clubs done so far this year that participate at your academy? Uh, very good. It kind of gives us uh, an indoor home. Um, and we do have several baseball teams and softball teams that are kind of calling that kind of their indoor home base. Uh, so I think that's kind of helped us. We're trying to be, you know, in inclusive, I guess, as, as, you know, as far as who we can allow in the facility and who to use it. Absolutely. Anyone's welcome to check out the facility at any time, you know, during business hours. Um, you know, we do offer memberships, but we also offer daily rates, too. So if you just stop in and like what you see and want to use a tunnel, we can, we can handle that. All right. Go ahead and check out Sports Junkie Academy in Blue Springs, Missouri. Alan, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. And we'll be right back. Midwest Sports Productions creates a unique atmosphere that allows youth athletes to grow on and off the field. Themed and benefit tournaments such as the Hawaiian Hip Fest, we love the Hawaiian Hip Fest and the Alex Gordon Classic brings out the best in every player. With 60 years of combined tournament directing experience and 7,500 teams participating last year, MSP is the country's largest youth sports provider. For a weekend of ball like no other, choose MSP. For more information, visit PlayMSP.com. Although a holiday weekend is approaching, that doesn't mean your SSA baseball and fast pitch is taking time off. On Monday, watch teams compete for a berth to the Elite World Series during a live broadcast of the KC Sports Memorial Day NIT on MLB.com. Then on next week's show, we'll have further coverage from the event and stories from the MSP Fast Pitch Memorial Day NIT, benefiting House of Hope. And as always, we conclude the show with social media snapshots from the weekend. Thanks for joining us for SSA Midwest Network News. We'll see you next week.